legendary former champion Roy Jones Jr., one of the best ever. I don't want to say I'm, I'm not disrespecting him or nothing like that. I just disagree with him a little bit here. Roy Jones Jr. says Deontay Wilder is not washed up. I'll link, uh, it's TMZ Sports, I'll just say it. Uh, I, I'm not going to show the video right now, but I, basically he just said Deontay Wilder is not washed up. He just, you know, he just had one bad fight or whatever. And he's saying that UFC fighters have seven, eight, nine losses. That is true. And they're not put out to pasture, you know, like Deontay Wilder. A lot of people saying he's washed up. And I'll go into the comments on the YouTube uh, video. And people are just saying, some people says uh, he's 100% washed up as far as Deontay Wilder. I'm just paraphrasing what other people are saying here. Can still bring uh, attention, attraction for a big payday. But against Parker, he looked like Tony Ferguson. No power in his punches, way less movement, gas quickly. His knockouts may have damaged him more than we think. I tend to agree with that. Someone named Brocky wrote that. But Roy Jones, I got to disagree with Roy Jones on this because I'm a huge Deontay Wilder fan. He broke my streak on predictions all summer going you know, into the fall and hitting his last fight with Parker. Was on a money with all my predictions, even on that card except the Wilder fight. Um... You know, I want to see Wilder have that big comeback story, but I have to be realistic and I have to show, talk about what the facts show. The facts show Deontay Wilder was brutalized, unfortunately, in three fights with Tyson Fury. He came back to have that one quick fight with the Nightmare and it was a really good fight, but it looked like Deontay Wilder had more left in him. A lot of people see our superheroes, like if you're a big boxing fan like me, you know, you see them as invincible and when you're a fan of them and you don't want to see... You don't think, oh, wow, this this could be, like, life-altering. They go on to have lives. Deontay Wilder, he's a great dad. You could see it. I don't want to see this man go out like that. I don't want to... I, I want to see... It would be nice to if he comes back and has, like, with the Nordic Nightmare, if he comes back and has one more fight. Uh, he's always dangerous. Don't get me wrong. Maybe he needs more time to heal. But I'm just saying, Deontay Wilder, as a fan... Like, yo, he had the greatest run ever until he ran into Fury. Uh, he had a really good run, okay? I would love to see him come back, absolutely. But we tend to forget our heroes, our athletes that we love so much, they're human beings. You know, I don't want to see this man damaged more. The, the fights with Wilder, if you look at them, without describing them too much, you saw the damage. And that's life-altering. That's going to catch up, unfortunately, with Deontay Wilder probably a little bit. And it already has. So he looked diminished to me. And yeah, he has that one big power, but he's a human being. Do we want to see him in there with another fight, especially at this stage of the game when he's going on 39 or whatever? He's, he's up there. He's almost 40. Do we want to see him take those big shots? Do we need to see that? No, I don't I don't want to see it. Um, of course, I'm full support of him if, if he does get back in the ring. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm... If you go back in boxing history and uh, Evander Holyfield had some type of weird uh, heart ailment, had a heart issue. Of course, I'm not a cardiologist or doctor, but George Foreman was ringside calling his fight. It might have been with Lewis the first fight, one of them. And he started screaming, stop the fight, stop the fight. This man is going to end up in a pine box. I remember that. But... um. Holyfield went on to recover somehow. The heart issue wasn't an issue anymore. And he went on to have some big fights after that. So you never know. You never know. But still. I don't want to see Deontay Wilder injured like that long term. More damage. As awesome and amazing superhero status. No need for gadgets. New non song so dope. Yeah. We don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. I don't want to see it. But, like I said, if he's going to fight again, I'll definitely check it out. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll be in full support of him. And, you know, I will be not biased in my predictions continuing with Deontay Wilder's career. Because it looks like he might not go out like that with a loss. And um, so Roy Jones, I disagree on that point. Because Roy Jones, we're talking about a fighter as much as I love Roy Jones. I believe he ruined his legacy. If he would have retired after he won a heavyweight title against John Ruiz, it would have been a different story. He just hung around too long. So we're listening to a guy give advice about Deontay Wilder not being washed up. I'm not saying totally washed up either, but we're just saying we're getting advice from a guy, a boxer. And I get it. Why can't boxers go on that boxes in his 50s? 
Roy Jones Jr. was fighting until recently in his 50s. In his 50s. You know, so, so of course, he's just a 38-year-old, 39-year-old Deontay Wilder. He's like, whoa, he's got a lot left in him. It's just one of those awkward things like boxers have to call it a day. Uh, George Foreman, very rarefied air, amazing. It's funny, like basically a kid back then, I predicted he would win because I saw that big power and I remember I remember Michael Moore didn't have a chin. So I predicted that fight. And I remember some older dudes laughing at me. I always talk about this story, it's hilarious. Oh, you, this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. I was like, yo, George Foreman's gonna win. He's gonna knock Mora out, Michael Mora, and he did. Shocked the world at, what, 44, 45? I forget the age, but he was in his 40s. Because I'm not Googling it to look everything up. How can I remember all these facts down to the numbers and stuff and the ages? Um, so, guys, I just want to say I do believe Deontay Wilder is definitely on the downside of his career. Obviously, no kidding. And I wish that Deontay Wilder didn't take such a hellacial beatings against Fury. I wish they would have ended earlier so there would have been less damage and I wish unfortunately as a Deontay Wilder fan I'm disgruntled for sure but it's just reality Deontay Wilder seems like the nicest person ever really outside of the ring he seems like yo like he's such a good dad you know his special needs daughter it inspired him to get that money to, to fight for her and they're all taking care of his kids his wifey everybody this man doesn't need any more money. And plus, he can always be around as a commentator or anything else. But I don't think we're there yet. Because it looks like Deontay Wilder might be coming back. And I hope he wins. And I hope he doesn't uh, take a, a lot of damage uh, in his next fight or fights. So we'll see what happens with Deontay Wilder. He's very, 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 very awesome. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I was wrong in my last prediction. I was wrong. And it was, it was like, wow, we're looking at a Deontay Wilder that is definitely not the same. He's diminished for sure. And it's definitely not because Parker was that good. Uh, Parker is good. But it was more because Deontay Wilder had three knockout TKO losses. No, two. The two stoppages. And the one, it was a draw. But he took a beating in that first fight. Two. It, it was a long fight. And he took hellacious punishment. I love that word, hellacious. But he did. He took a lot of damage. And it's just... I, I just, you know, I just want to see the best for this man. I don't want to see Deontay Wilder go out like that. I want to see him have a healthy recovery, rest time. And I want to see him outside of the ring. And, and see what he does outside of the ring. As a human being. You know, not a fighter anymore. So maybe he could have a career in sports for sure. If he wants to. Anyway, uh, also Roy Jones Jr., Stay out of the ring. Roy Jones Jr. was one of the best super middleweights ever. I still remember the first time I ever saw Roy Jones Jr. I believe it was on a Don King card. It was definitely on Showtime, which is no more as far as boxing goes, which is crazy. And Do Roy Jones Jr. had a dog collar around his neck like a pit bull would have. Spikes. And I remember him winning the fight and jumping across the ring. And I was like, who is this guy? Roy Jones Jr., the arrival in my head was, yeah, Showtime in the 90s, incredible fighter. He did some things that nobody could ever do. I remember him playing a box, a basketball game before a boxing fight against some dude, and he won. It was crazy. Roy Jones Jr. then got with HBO as a commentator as well. Had some great times over there, and Roy Jones Jr. could just still do that, be a trainer, be a commentator. I don't even think you should go in there ever again in the ring for anything. Even these exhibitions, they will damage you. You can ask any doctor. I mean, look. The, the, the dementia, the, the head is not made for punches, especially as you get older and you age, to begin with. I mean, this is going to cause so many problems. Look at Floyd Mayweather's uncle, Roger Mayweather. He went from, he was a fighter, professional fighter. He's pretty good, too. He went from training Floyd Mayweather to like all of a sudden stepping back and then having issues and then wandering out of the house not knowing where he, he is. And then all of a sudden, unfortunately, he passed away because he lost his marbles basically because of boxing. Boxing, if you hang around long enough and, and you get hit enough in the head, nobody wants to really talk about it. It will cause major problems down the line for you. So yeah, 
that's the that's the sad state so sometimes when these fights are stopped quick in a fighter i've seen him get hit a lot early in a fight i'm not too mad when they stop it unless it's like obvious corruption you know uh i think his name was jimmy garcia atlantic city many 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 years ago i watched him fight <clears throat> guy didn't make it after that fight i think his name was jimmy garcia good fighter <sighs> yeah so over the years i did see more of that I saw it somewhere else. It was on a ESPN two card. Uh, I forget this dude's name. He's a really, really good fighter. He's a Dominican dude, and he damaged another fighter. And the guy lay, let out a weird scream at the end of the fight. It was weird in a corner, and he went down, and he didn't make it. After he went to the ER, it was just an unfortunate series of uh, fights that I witnessed on TV. Also in the amateurs, I was watching in New York back in the day. I saw a kid get taken out in the neck brace damn is really bad i think steve smoger was on hand that night he was a legendary referee who was known to let fights go longer i don't remember if he refereed that amateur bout but yo it was it was serious so when you see stuff like that you know you tend to want to see these fights not you know boxers fighters athletes not take too much damage we want to have a good time watch the fight end it fast if the guy's hurt i don't want to see these guys permanently injured that's just me. And that's from my experience from watching boxing over the years. So, Deontay Wilder, all the best to you. And Roy Jones Jr., all the best to you. Love you guys. And I hope to see you guys thrive and just have a great lives, continue great lives and be blessed and just not damaged. Really, I don't want to see that. Really upsets me. Anyway, I'm out.